Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, December 13th, 2016 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. Well, ahead of Microsoft's Patch Tuesday, we got updates from Apple. Apple fixed 12 vulnerabilities in iOS, one in tvOS and two in watchOS. One vulnerability is actually affecting all three operating systems and it does get triggered by installing a malicious profile. Now, profiles that you install in iOS or these other operating systems are really certificates that can then be used in order to sign settings and the like. Well, if if you are importing a malicious certificate, code execution may happen and this is fixed in this update. Now for iOS, again, we have a total of 12 vulnerabilities. Some of the more interesting ones are there are a number of lock screen issues that are being fixed here, either bypassing the lock screen or preventing the lock screen from actually taking effect. There's also an issue that I found sort of uh, interesting in that you can no longer speak passwords because apparently passwords that are being spoken, yes, they can be overheard by people in your proximity. I wouldn't call any of uh, these vulnerabilities extra critical, so apply the patch as it becomes available, but no need to rush it at this point unless we are seeing some exploits being published. Apparently a recent update to Windows 8 and Windows 10 is causing these systems to have a hard time getting a DHCP lease from a very selective routers. Not really clear what the issue is, but appears to be affecting certain ISPs that use these routers. Now this will only affect your LAN site. Uh, so in this case, assign a static IP. That's probably the quickest fix to get back Back into business until there is another patch being released either by Microsoft or the manufacturers of these routers. And if you're one of the few users that is running McAfee's Virus Scan Enterprise for Linux, it's time to patch and you should patch quickly. McAfee did release an update for this service, which is a virus scanner running on Linux with a web front end. Now, due to various vulnerabilities in the web front end, it is possible to read arbitrary files, write files, execute arbitrary code and all that without authentication. And yes, there are exploits available for these vulnerabilities. This service typically listens on port 55,443. So if you wanna do a quick scan of your infrastructure, you will probably discover if you are running this system. I'm not aware of anything else listening on this particular high port. And new ransomware that goes on the name of Popcorn Time apparently is using a new way to spread itself. If a victim is infected by this particular ransomware, you may actually be able to obtain a free decryption key for this ransomware if you promise to infect two more victims. So essentially a snowball marketing scheme for ransomware. This ransomware itself appears to be still pretty rare. So I'm not sure how well it works at this point uh, to have the victims actually keep spreading that malware. And Europol led a major operation across Europe arresting 35 different users of distributed denial of service tools. They also interviewed and cautioned 101 additional suspects in this pretty large crackdown. Now, interesting here is that most of these suspects are 20 years and younger. So very typical, your average teenage hackers, as it's sometimes described, doesn't appear to be anybody very sophisticated or skilled. In most cases, uh, these suspects 
were identified after they paid for attack services from various DDoS networks. So these are not necessarily the individuals behind these tools that were actually deploying them and writing these DDoS tools. And of course, with these attacks against the Internet of Things and these things being used in denial of service attacks still on everybody's mind and still being discussed in the mainstream press, I put together a little list of five questions that you probably should ask if you're buying an Thing that you will connect to the internet. I think this also includes things like routers and switches and the like. Take a look at the list and I would really be interesting to hear also from vendors to see what answers are to some of these questions from vendors. I have a real hard time getting answers from pretty much any vendor for any of these questions. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.